Okay, I'm gonna tell you the top three reasons why I think your renders might feel boring and how to fix that so that people find your work more interesting to look at, so that people can actually connect with your artwork on a deeper level, and so that people might become inspired by what you create. So really quick, my name is Max. Here are some of my renders that I've made that I think are interesting, just so that you can see what I'm talking about and decide whether you wanna actually listen to my advice or not. Okay, so number one, the first reason is technical skill slash photorealism. This is especially important in 3D rendering because if you miss this, your your render will end up looking like a render. The goal of rendering is actually not to make it look like a render, it's actually usually to make it look like not a render. And all the advanced techniques that you see people showing here are ways to avoid that rendery, like 3D bad graphics type of look. The best thing to learn here, just a general blanket skill to cover all of this is if you learn photorealism, that kind of takes care of most of the technical side of it because if, if you can make things look photo real that means at a, a general level you understand the rules and then you can go on and break them from there however if you don't understand the rules it's very hard to actually get a pleasing image in the first place so this you know my work is not really photo realistic i would say it definitely not um but there are aspects of photo realism in the picture so that i can accurately represent certain parts of it whether that's certain 3d models whether that's just the textures I want you know my materials to feel like that actual material and not just a 3D representation of it in a bad graphics kind of way. The camera settings and the camera angles that I choose are generally based on, uh, they're meant to look like pictures that could actually be taken by a real person. All these things are ways that I include aspects of photorealism in my image that make the, the technical side of the, the image uh, just better overall. And basically the goal of all this is to hide that blendery, bad graphics, uh, just, you know, plasticky, rendery look. Uh, because if you, the second that illusion breaks and you start to see it as a render, it just makes it a lot less nice to look at overall. So the easiest way to improve photorealism, if I'm just gonna give you one technique here, is just use reference images. Uh, so a reference image is just, is literally just an image of something that is already made that you reference or look at as you're making your render. So if you're going to make um, an ancient temple render, for example, go and look at pictures of actual ancient temples or go and look at um, other artists work that you like of re their renderings of ancient temples. Um, and if you just go and look at a bunch of versions of that thing, your, your representation of it that you're trying to create will come across much more accurately and look much better and much more photorealistic if you have reference images to look at. If you're just, uh, you can either tab back and forth between just the Google page if you're gonna do it that way, that's what I used to do. Or more recently, I've been using this free software called Pure Ref. You might have seen this before. It's just a free mood board software, which is really nice to have. I'll just put it on the side of my screen and then have Blender taking up most of the space in my monitor. And then just, you can just drag and drop images directly from Google or ArtStation or wherever drag and drop it directly into pure ref and there you go you can really easily build up a mood board and have a lot of reference images to look at and that will translate to better renders okay reason number two why your renders might feel boring is story or lack thereof so what what do i actually mean when i say this i, I want to explain this in a way that is as clear as possible because i feel like when people talk about story it just doesn't come across that clear to me and i've only realized this recently what this actually means uh at least what it means to me so there's kind of two two sides to this coin one side is the what you've probably already heard which is strategic placement of props and just random objects around the scene which hint at a greater narrative or provide context for uh quote unquote the story of the picture so that could be something like if your render is takes place in a mine inside of a mine you might uh have like a tipped over mine cart in the mine. Uh, and that's an object that you would place there intentionally to hint at the fact that maybe it's abandoned. You know, that could, that would be an object that you placed in there to hint at what the picture is about. So that is one aspect of it. And that is something you can do. And that is a powerful technique to just make the image more interesting. But I don't think it's the most important part of what makes a story in, in a, a good story in an artwork. So what I think is more important than that, which is pretty easy to do, is actually posing questions to the viewer 
through your environment without revealing the answer. So you want to make the viewer curious about what is happening in the picture and you don't want to tell them all of those answers or even any of the answers. So the goal here is not to confuse people. The goal is to intrigue them and let them come to their own conclusion as to what the image is about. So for example, in this image here, uh, I don't know, this is not, this isn't necessarily the best example ever. I'm just choosing this one to go off of. But if we look at what is going on here, we are in some sort of ancient place. We're using some aspects of the, the first method, which I just talked about, which is just strategic placement of props to hint at the greater narrative. So that's things like there's incense burners up here, which could hint at, okay, it's probably something to do with like something religious or spiritual. Um, there's random treasure chests down here, which could hint at, uh, you know, this being in a place of importance or, you know, a place where you keep valuable stuff. There's stairs, which hint at other places you can walk to in this environment, uh, the, the engravings, all these kinds of like things are like uh, strate strategic placement of props, I guess. But more importantly, the answer to the question, what is this place, is not revealed in this picture. It's maybe semi-revealed in the sense that you get a, an idea that it's an ancient place, it's maybe a place of worship or something spiritual or religious or something like that. But there is no direct answer. There's no answer of who made it, who was here, why is this guy here? Or it kind of seems like we're discovering this or this guy is discovering this in this picture. But it's not clear why they're here, what this place is, anything like that. And very often people will comment on my work and they'll actually tell me, they'll actually in their comment, they will like write what that thing is about. Uh, or like what the thing that I made is about. And it's something that I've never heard before. And it actually adds up and makes sense. But that's an answer that they came up with in their own head and is not an answer that I provided to them. If you can create a sense of intrigue and let people actually come to their own conclusions, they might actually talk with other people about it. And that's kind of what makes an interesting image in my opinion is if it's clearly something important, but you don't really know what and um, yeah, if you let people come to their own conclusions as to exactly what it's about, that, in my opinion, is good environmental storytelling. Okay, the number three reason why your renders might feel boring is your composition choices. So, very simply put, composition is just the arrangement of visual elements, or in other words, things, just anything in the picture, the arrangement of things in the picture usually with the goal of guiding the viewer through the image in a way that is pleasing and also easy to understand. So when I say easy to understand, I'm not talking about the story. Again, that can kind of be vague and be, the story can be kind of set in a way that doesn't reveal the answers and kind of makes people interested. But when I say easy to understand in terms of composition, I mean the visual, all the visual data that you are taking in through your eyes when you see the picture, should be clear and easy to interpret and not um, uncomfortable to look at. And I'll get to that in a second. I think the reason that this exists as a concept in the first place, composition, I think the reason that this is actually important at all is because of, partially because of the way that our eyes work. So if you think about a camera, imagine a landscape, you can just point the camera at the landscape, hit the shutter, it'll take the picture and the camera will just capture all of the data crystal clear that is in that general direction that it's looking. That is not how your eyes work. Um, if you are looking at that same landscape, you have you can you can see all of it in like the general area that you're looking, but you have an attentional spotlight, so to speak, where you have a peripheral vision that is low resolution around the outside of your field of view, and you have a small spotlight in the middle, which is the direct point that you're looking at. So, for example, if you make eye contact with someone, that you are, you are focusing on a very small point, which is their eyes, and everything else around it is gonna be uh, low resolution information that you're taking in. So that means to see a full picture of something, your eyes actually have to be moving around the whole picture. And that's the only way that you're gonna see the whole thing in full resolution and understand all the data that you're taking in. So that means that if we're looking at an artwork for the first time, if every single thing seems just as important in the picture and there's no sense of guiding you through the image. There's no sense of what is mo more important, what is less important. 
uh, there's no sense of composition, you're going to be trying to intake all that information all at once. And that's where you get an image that is unpleasant, or in other words, uh, takes effort to try and understand the data that you're actually seeing. So you want to try and avoid that because people don't like having to use effort to try and understand your artwork. So the point of composition is to remove that barrier of effort and make it effortless to understand the data that you're intaking. So you can do that with things like uh, light and dark. So things like if you uh, intentionally make the non-important parts of the image darker, that's something I'll do a lot. And you can use things like framing in the picture to make it very clear and obvious where you're supposed to look. Or you can use things like leading lines to to guide people on a path through the image and that attentional spotlight that people have, you will naturally take control of that and guide them to exactly where they're supposed to look in the picture or the focal point. You can make this more high contrast. A focal point is just uh, the most important part of the picture uh, or in other words, the reason that the picture was captured in the first place. Something I see a lot in more beginners work is you might actually be good at the all the technical stuff. You might go and create an environment that actually follows all the technical rules. It looks good overall. There's literally nothing wrong with the environment, except in the image that they've captured in the render, it feels like there's nothing happening and there was no reason for the picture. And that generally happens because there is no focal point. In other words, there is no one thing in the picture that stands out above the other things that makes it clear why that picture was captured in the first place. So the focal point does not have to be something that is exceptionally wildly interesting. If it is, it, it can be, and that's great if it is, but it does not have to be that. It just has to look like one thing is more important than the other things in the picture. That's all it is. Okay, so um, yeah, there's many different compositional techniques. I don't wanna get into all these different compositional techniques here. If I'm gonna recommend one thing, I would go and say Blender Guru has a very good video on composition that is meant for 3D artists to understand. So. Just look up Blender Guru composition. He has a good video on that if you want to understand more of the specific techniques. But yeah, the, the point of it is to make it pleasing and easy to understand the data of the picture. That's that's what I think. Okay, so quick summary. Number one, technical skill and photorealism. I actually think this is the least important part, though it is still very important, but um, use reference images to improve your photorealism skills and make the image just technically better overall. Number two, story. This is what makes the image just interesting and uh, what will keep people thinking about the picture even after they're not seeing it anymore. And you can do that. You can make the story more interesting by uh, intriguing the viewer by posing questions through your environment that are not explicitly revealed in the picture. And number three, composition, which is basically how you direct the viewer's attention, how you make the image easy to understand and um, how you make it just appear more pleasing to the human eye. So if you use those three things, your images will be a lot more interesting, a lot less boring, and uh, hopefully that was helpful. If you enjoyed this video, you might wanna go and check out my environments course, link to that below. And yeah, thank you for watching. Hopefully this was helpful and bye.